Welcome everyone to the Reality of Health. Today we're talking about something that you never know quite what's going on. You're like, man, that food did not do well with me. Or, man, did I really, did I get like food poisoning or something? Well, it might not be food poisoning. You might ask yourself, why is it always when I eat that food? It just doesn't agree with me. Or, you know, every time I eat these types of foods, like a whole group, I have to go to the bathroom a lot. Or I break out in acne or psoriasis or headaches or any number of things. You know, it could be an emulsifier in food. What the heck is that, Eric? Oh, we're going to get into it. This causes so many problems for people. And one of the main things that you're going to find this in is fake milk. You know, all that oat milk and almond milk and all that garbage. It's not real food. And in order to make that stuff work, they need emulsifiers. Here we go. Here's a list of the emulsifiers. Now, this is uh, um, uh, gutsygirl.com. She's fantastic. Great website. Tons of information. Here's a good list. I'm not going to go through all of these in this episode. I'm just going to show you just a couple. Some of these you've seen quite a lot, but this uh, carboxymethylcellulose, yeah, that's a really bad one. Carrageenan, you're going to see that a lot. Cellulose gum, Gower gum, all these gums, ooh, terrible on the gut. They just wreak havoc. Lecithin, you're going to see a lot. Eric, I thought lecithin comes from soy and sunflower and egg, and it's it's good for us, right? Nope, not in this form. PEG, polyethylene glycol. Yes, that is. <laughs> I can do a three-hour episode on PEG. And then polysorbate 80, another really, really bad one, associated with so many issues. Now, we're not going to get into every single one of them here. I'm just going to give you a good primer on emulsifiers and what you need to watch out for if you're going to buy food that's pre-made. Okay, let's go through this. Here's a quick list, just another quick list for you. But I wanted you to see this, how some of these come from natural sources like the lecithin we just talked about. But then you get into things that are synthetic. So these are made in laboratories. It's not like the lab you're thinking of, but they're man-made. They're like highly processed chemicals in a very clean facility, but they mass produce them in order to make something that is relatively natural for the most part, but has some major problems. And then, of course, there are some other ones that are natural. But I want you to see how synthetic these things are. And then also, here's a great um, kind of like an idea of what they're in a little bit. Mostly baked goods and anything you need to make into a liquid or any of the batters, dairy, uh, especially things like ice cream and nut butters and all this kind of stuff. Okay. So here's how this works. Do you ever try to make a, an emulsion? You know, you take some oil and vinegar and a little bit of mustard and you make that little dressing for your salad and it holds together. Otherwise, they separate, right? Well, that's because water is hydrophilic and oil is hydrophobic. If you've ever seen this concept, picture the hood of your car. If you have a whole lot of water bubbles sitting there, that's hydrophobic, like the oil. If you have one big sheet of water and it just kind of slides off the car, that's hydrophilic. Two totally different mechanisms, essentially the same thing. They just, they're slightly different. Well, when you combine these two, with an emulsifier, you can you can actually create this right here. So you take the water, an emulsifier, stabilizer, and an oil. You mix those two. They become all together like your salad dressing. <laughs> yeah, don't ever buy salad dressing. It's totally garbage, and it's very, very unhealthy. Make your own if you're going to do it at home, but don't buy the stuff in the store. So anyway, this is the process that is ruining your interior of your body. These emulsifiers are, are just wreaking havoc in your gut. Starts in your mouth all the way through. 
So essentially what's happening is you are ruining the surfaces of everything from your mouth to your down there. You're, you're, I'm going to show you what it looks like here in a second, but you are deteriorating your protective mechanisms by creating using by, by creating an emulsion or a, um, a food, let's say ice cream when you use an emulsifier and it mixes really well and stays together so that when they freeze it and you eat it, it's in a really good consistency. That then has to do the same thing and will do the same thing in all of the mucosal areas of your body from your mouth all the way through. I hope this makes sense. Let's move on. So here's how this looks. Here we have tight junctions. So this would be the interior lining of let's say your intestine or your stomach or something like that. You've heard of leaky gut. Well, this is what this is, but it's on a different scale. It's on a, you're not, you're not, we're not talking about things like um, gluten and stuff like this. We're talking about emulsifiers, which is almost a mechanical action of breaking down this mucus that's covering the cells that you need. That is one of your barriers. So if you get rid of this by taking this mucosal lining and tearing it down, utilizing emulsifiers, then essentially what you did was you did this. You got rid of it. Remember? Because in order to mix these two to create a solution of water and oil, you're doing the same thing here. Emulsifiers break down mucus into it's, it's kind of like if I take oil, spread it across your intestinal lining. Only things that are going to go through that oil is what your body wants to go through that oil. But then it holds the water away from it. Doesn't let the water penetrate. So then you go and take an emulsifier and in a case of, let's say, a dressing, you add the mustard. Mustard in this case would be something like polysorbate 80. It mixes the two and then breaks this down and you lose that covering. You follow me? When you lose that covering like that, it now, listen, your intestinal lining is very thin. It's, it's only like a cell layer thin. Okay. So if it opens up and you have junctions that get larger than stuff, that's food items and just name it. Anything that's in your food can pass through into your blood vessels. And when they're in your blood vessels, your body goes, Oh no, we got, we got to do something. Here's a little quick little breakdown. Disruption of mucosal barrier, ingressive microorganisms. And I'm disagreeing with that one a little bit, but then you get inflammatory situations because the body goes, uh Oh, we got battle. Now there's things inside the body that are not supposed to be there because they didn't get digested all the way down to their final components before they entered into the areas of the body that are way more sensitive. You know, like let's say your, uh, your eyeballs, they're expecting to see certain proteins and other nutrients. And instead, what do they see? Sugar, like a certain type of sugar that's not supposed to be in the blood. It's like, Whoa, what is this? So you basically become susceptible to stuff, things, ingredients in foods, materials that irritate and cause your body to fight. And when it fights, it causes symptoms. So here's some of the things that it's in. Peanut butter, ice cream, margarine, biscuits, cakes, frozen desserts, bread, chewing gum, mayonnaise, salad dressings, processed meats, chocolate. Yes. Candies, fillings and icings, coffee creamers. Oh, that's the one of the worst. Infant formula. Hmm, I just seem to have a bunch of episodes recently on infant formula. So these is just this is just a small. <laughs> this is literally a small list because if you were to make this a really long list, it's 
basically you can walk the entire grocery store and find it in almost everything. First symptoms you get is the gut. From constipation, flatulence, skin issues because skin is a direct reflection of your gut. You get nutritional deficiencies because your body's fighting all the invaders. Acid reflux because it's breaking down the tissues in your throat and your stomach. Bloating and gas because your microbiome is completely freaked out because you're basically, you know, they're one of their uh, symbiotic, let's call it, um, barriers that they utilize as well is this mucosal lining. Get rid of the mucosal lining and they're like, well, wait a minute, I want to stick to something. I need to be in that mucosal lining. And when you get rid of it, you lose your probiotics. You lose your biome, then you're in trouble and you can get things like that. But more importantly, you can get pain in the abdomen and diarrhea. What would also be diarrhea in a sense that it becomes a real issue? That would be Crohn's disease and those types. Those people need to get off of anything that has emulsifiers in it. You are ruining the lining of your gut. That's why it has no integrity. And then we know that the gut is completely connected to your brain and your mental health. So you can have poor mental health. The other one that it affects is your cardiovascular system. What? Eric, what, why would emulsifiers in my food like polysorbate 80 or some of these affect my heart? Oh, there are studies showing this now. There's many, many uh, countries around the world that do not let things like emulsifiers in their food because they found people became, um, well, they had heart issues. And then when you look back and they did the studies and could be animal and human as well, they find heart issues. I'm not going to get into all these. Again, this is a primer, but there's no reason for emulsifiers in your food. And it could be one of the things that is affecting your cardiovascular health. That's a huge topic so much on its own. I should just have an episode on emulsifiers and cardiovascular. <laughs> the other one is weight gain. You're thinking, man, no matter what I do, I just I can't lose weight. Well, when your digestive system is completely messed up, your microbiome is gone. It's very, very difficult to lose weight. And as a matter of fact, it is totally associated with obesity. If you're having weight issues, you definitely need to look into emulsifiers in your food. Cancer. There are clinical studies showing that it affects cancer. All of them. This would be, we'll have a cancer episode in the future. I'm not going to get too far into it right now. But essentially, your body utilizes tumors and collection sites for toxins and dead tissue. It's kind of like garbage bags and it keeps them into a spot so that it can break those down and get rid of them. If you get too many, well, it's like your house. If you have too many, well, then your whole house is nasty inside, right? That's a problem. You want to be able to create a tumor and then have your natural body's mechanisms get rid of it. And by the way, that happens every day, all day with everybody. It's when you become too toxic that you can't do this normal metabolism of toxins and uh, dead tissue. Emulsifiers will increase the fact that your body has to take the toxins that are coming through the gut and, and the, maybe even the esophagus, your stomach, because those toxins are getting into the body and now it has to collect more. So without your mucosal barrier in your, in your soft tissue inside your canal from your mouth to your, you know what, when you lose that toxins invade, you're, now your body has to collect those toxins, hence cancer. The other one it causes is diabetes. A lot of research on this one too. Diabetes is not just a sugar thing, but I will say if you have sugar, that has not been processed properly through the digestive system, it just enters right into the bloodstream because you don't have a mucosal barrier, you're going to have a real problem with insulin and how to get rid of all the excess sugar. You know what doesn't 
have emulsifiers in it? Well, that would be whole foods. <laughs> yeah. Why not just eat real food? I don't like this bread here, but if you made your own bread, and this dairy should not be any kind of dairy with emulsifiers in it, but you're not going to really put emulsifiers in dry goods like pasta here, right? You're not going to do that. You don't need it in beans and vegetables and eggs. No need because they're whole foods. Guess what you do need it in? All of this garbage. You, it needs to be in all of this to hold it together. So why eat this? I mean, if you want to, you know, binge or you, you know, you just want to try it once or something. Yeah, you're probably all right. You start doing more than just a little bit. You break down that barrier. You're in trouble. This is not real food. This has consequences. Major. You don't need anything on the right side here. Nothing. You need mostly the meat here and the seafood and the dairy and the eggs, less vegetables and even less fruit. Your gut will love you for it. All right, just doing a short one today. Thank you for listening. If you have any ideas you want to, you know, want episodes on in the future, let me know. But you got to watch out for these emulsifiers in your food. They are terrible for you. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>